So one thing you might notice is that our initial attempts with vectors have all been very um, very geometrically oriented, but also very vague. I just kind of drew arrows in this direction and that direction and told you to add them together and things like that. Uh, so we need to have a more precise language for variables. And to do that, we're going to talk about the components of vectors. And so let's say I have a vector like this, call that vector v. We're looking for the vector components. What does that mean? Once we put these vectors into an xy plane, we could actually talk about the amount of change in the x direction and the amount of change in the y direction. And so this value here and this value here can tell us uh, which direction and also how long the vector is. You can see that we've got a right triangle here. There's an angle right here that we can call theta. We could go back and apply all of our trigonometry knowledge to this vector. But now the question is, well, what does, how do we notate this? To notate a vector, we use pointy brackets and then an x value and then a y value. The important thing about these x and y values is that they do not refer to a specific point. They refer to the amount of movement from the initial position to the terminal position. So this vector right here does not have anything to do with the point x comma y. This vector here says if you pick a point, move this much in the x direction and that much in the y direction, the corresponding vector you get is that vector. And so we call this the x component of the, ve uh, the vector and the y component of the vector, the components of the vector. And so once we have this, we can, as I said, we can draw a right triangle from this and we can then figure out the length of the vector, which we denote like this. These look like absolute value signs. Uh, this is usually called the length or sometimes the magnitude of the vector. And if we just take a look at our picture, we know that the length of that vector is going to be the square root of x squared plus y squared. Uh, if it turns out to be the case that the length of v is equal to 1, then we say that v is a unit vector. So when we talk about unit vectors, we're talking about vectors of length 1. All right, so what can we do with this? Well, I can now tell you that we have a vector of length seven at an angle of 135 degrees. And I can ask you to find the components of that vector. So take a moment and see if you can figure out from this information what the components of that vector must be. Okay, so draw a coordinate axes. I'm going to go ahead and put this uh, initial point of the vector at the origin just because it makes this uh, picture easier to look at, but it doesn't have to be there. It could be anywhere we want it to be. An angle of 135 degrees. Well, that's referring to this. So this is going to be a 135 degree angle. And then this has a length of 7. And so we need to figure out where uh, the amount of movement from here to here. Uh, so unsurprisingly, turn into a right triangle. This right here, this 45 degree angle is a reference angle. Uh, it's not going to squeeze it in. 45 degree reference angle. And so from this, we can calculate the x and the y values. These also correspond to uh, the values that we got from polar coordinates. So 7 cosine 135 degrees and y is equal to 7 sine 135 degrees. Alternatively, you can solve for the length of this triangle and use the fact that we're in the second quadrant to make the uh, x value negative and the y value positive. Uh, either way, it doesn't matter. You should get the same result. The x value is negative 7 times root 2 over 2. The y value is 7 times root 2 over 2. And so the vector components for x, uh, for the vector v is going to be the it's negative 7 square root of 2 over 2, comma, 7 square root of 2 over 2. And remember here, we're using pointy brackets because we're talking about a vector. We can ask the same sort of question, but turn it around. This time, I, I can give you the components of the vector. And you can try to use this to determine the angle and the length of the vector. So now take a moment and try this one. 
All right, well, once again, I'll just sort of draw my coordinate axes. I'll, again, convenience, we'll put the terminal point at the, or sorry, the initial point at the origin. Three comma negative two. This means we go three in the x direction and negative two in the y direction. So one, two, three, one, two, or something like this. That's the vector three comma negative two. Again, it's a right triangle. There's our three, there's a negative two. Uh, you could also call that a two and think about this in terms of length, but I use the signed, uh, uh, the signed movement here. Uh, the hypotenuse of a triangle, hypotenuse of a triangle, well, that's going to be a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So the length of u, or the magnitude of u, is going to be the square root of 3 squared plus 2 squared, which is 9 and 4 makes 13, square root of 13. The angle is going to be this one. Notice that we are in the fourth quadrant, so uh, we can think of this as a negative valued angle. How will we calculate that angle? Well, we can use the fact that tangent of theta is equal to negative, so tangent is opposite over, um, opposite over adjacent. And now from here, we can use our calculator to find out, whoops, use our calculator to find out what that uh, angle theta is. Uh, we're going to go ahead and it doesn't say either way so we're just going to stick with degrees for this so i'll make sure my calculator is in degree mode i want to find the inverse tangent of uh, this was negative two-thirds so negative two over three and so the angle theta is equal to negative 33.69 degrees all right so these are the components of a vector we are able to take any vector and talk about it either by its length and angle or we talk, talk about by its components and we can move back and forth between the two. So let's look at the algebra of vectors. Uh, before we do that, let's go back and first review. If we have two vectors, let's call them v1 and v2, if we were to add them together, the resultant vector starts from the tail of the first and ends at the head of the second. So that's v1 plus v2. Now for each one of these vectors, we can break them down into components. So we would have x1 and then y1, and then x2 and then y2. And the resultant vector would be a right triangle like this, and the question is, how much in the x direction and how much in the y direction do we have? Well, if we just look at this right here, this is x1, this is, will be x2. So we'll get x1 plus x2 in the x direction, y1 plus y2 in the y direction. And this actually gives us the entirety of vector arithmetic, adding vectors together. So v1 plus v2, that's x1, y1 plus x2, y2. The result that we get is x1 plus x2 in the horizontal direction, and then y1 plus y2 in the vertical direction. And so when we add vectors by com uh, in component form, we say we add them component-wise, meaning that we add the x part to the x part and the y part to the y part. Something similar happens when we do scaling of vectors. When we scale a vector, so we'll start with, let's use a black pen here. We have a vector v. If we wanted to do 2v, it's twice as long. If we wanted to do 3v, it's three times as long. One way of thinking about this is that we're adding the vector to itself multiple times, which leads us to the idea of multiplication as uh, multiple, uh, multi uh, repeated addition is a way of representing multiplication. And so if we wanted to do k times a vector v, that's k times x comma y, all we have to do is we have to scale each component separately, kx times ky. And so this gives us the basics of how we're going to start doing these manipulations. Uh, if we had a vector v, let's put this up here. We have the vector v, which is going to be negative 1, 4, and the vector u, which is going to be 3, comma, negative 2. We could ask the question, well, what is the vector w defined by 3u minus 2v? Take a moment and see if you can do this arithmetic yourself. 
All right, so the vector u is 3 comma negative 2 minus 2, and the vector v is negative 1, 4. So we're going to distribute. Well, we'll see why this is a uh, distributive problem. We're going to multiply each component by 3, 9, negative 6, minus negative 2, 8. 9 minus negative 2 is 11. Negative 6 minus 8 is negative 14. And so this is vector arithmetic. We can also express vectors in another form. So if we have a vector v, which is x comma y, we could write it in terms of the standard basis vectors. Now this is not language that you're going to see very often unless you get further in, ma in math, standard basis vectors. And so the notation you want to recognize is that i is the vector 1 comma 0 and j is the vector 0 comma 1. So i corresponds to one unit in the x direction, j corresponds to one unit in the y direction. And any vector that we have can be broken up using vector arithmetic into a form that looks like this. So remember if we add component wise x plus 0 comma 0 plus y we get that. Here we're going to factor out the x and factor out the y, and then use the standard basis vectors to represent those two. And this is why I referred to it earlier as the uh, distributive property, because now if we have something like 3v, it's going to be 3 times xi plus yj. And now we actually have a legitimate distributive property, 3 times this plus 3 times that, 3xi plus 3yj. Now it's very important that the i and j notation with the vector symbols here and here do not mix with the bracket symbol. The pointy brackets represent vectors. Letters with these vector signs over it represent vectors. We do not mix them. So the following does not actually make sense. xi comma yj, where we have both the vector notation as brackets and we have vectors inside here. We never do that. So please try to avoid that mistake.